There's a story that in the early 1990s, Alan Border, having faced him, walked back to the Australian dressing room and said, he's a leg spinner, but he bowls a lot of googlies. <laughs> Arjuna's team was now in place, and it was an impressive pool of talent. But they were not yet a team. Although winning the 1996 World Cup was a long-term goal, they needed to find a rallying point, a uniting factor that gave them a sense of team, a cause to fight for, an event that, not will, that will not only bind the team together, giving them a common focus, but also rally the entire support of a nation for the team and its journey. This came on Boxing Day at the MCG in 1995. Few realized it at the time, but the no-balling of Murali for alleged chucking had far-reaching consequences. The issue raised the ire of an entire nation. Murali was no longer alone. His pain, embarrassment, and anger were shared by all. No matter what critics say, the manner in which Arjuna and the team stood behind Murali made an entire Sri Lankan nation proud. In that moment, Sri Lanka adopted the cricketers simply as Ape Kollo, which means our boys. Gone was the earlier detachment of the Sri Lankan cricket fan, and in its place was a newfound love for those 15 men. They became our sons, our brothers. Sri Lankans stood with them and shared their trials and tribulations. The decision to no-ball Murali in Melbourne was for all Sri Lankans an, Ill, an, an insult that would not be allowed to pass unavenged. It was the catalyst that spurred the Sri Lankan team on to do the unthinkable, become world champions just 14 years after obtaining full ICC status. It is also important to mention here that prior to 1981, more than 80% of the national players came from elite English schools. But by 1996, the same schools did not contribute a single player to the 1996 World Cup winning squad. The impact of that World Cup victory was enormous, both broadening the game's grassroots and as well as connecting all Sri Lankans with one shared passion. For the first time, children from outstations and government schools were allowed to make cricket their own. Cricket was opened up to the masses. This unlocked the door for untapped talent not in, only to gain exposure, but have a realistic chance of playing the game at the highest level. These new grassroots cricketers brought with them the attributes of normal Sri Lankans, playing the game with a passion, a joy and intensity that had been hitherto missing. They had watched Sanaf, Kalu, Murali and Aravinda play a brand of cricket that not only changed the concept of one day cricket, but was also instantly identifiable as being truly Sri Lankan. We were no longer timid or soft or minnows. We had played and beaten the best in the world. We had done that without pretense or shame, in a manner that highlighted and celebrated our national values, our collective cultures, and our habits. It was a brand of cricket we were proud to call our own, a style with local spirit and flair embodying all that was good in our heritage. The World Cup win gave us a new strength to understand our place in our society as cricketers. In the World Cup, a country found a new beginning, a new inspiration upon which to build their dreams of a better future for Sri Lanka. Here were 15 individuals from different backgrounds, races and religions, each fiercely proud of his own individuality, and yet they united not just as a team, but as a family. Fighting for a common national cause, representing the entirety of our society, providing a shining example to every Sri Lankan showing them with obvious clarity what it was to be truly Sri Lankan. The 1996 World Cup gave all Sri Lankans a commonality, one point of collective joy and ambition that gave a divided society true national identity 
and was to be the panacea that healed all social evils and would stand the country in good stead through terrible natural disasters and a tragic civil war. <clears throat> the 1996 World Cup win inspired people to look at their country differently. The sport overwhelmed terrorism and political strife. It provided something that everyone held dear to their hearts and helped normal people get through their lives. The team also became a microcosm of how Sri Lankan society should be, with players from different backgrounds, ethnicities, and religions sharing their common joy, their passion, and love for each other and their motherland. Regardless of war, here we were playing together, and the Sri Lankan team became a harmonizing factor. After the historic win, the entire game of cricket in Sri Lanka was revolutionized. Television money started to pour into cricket board's coffers. Large national and multinational corporations fought for sponsorship rights. Cricketers started to earn real money, both in the form of national contracts and endorsement deals. For the first time, cricketers won billboards and television advertising products, advertising anything from sausages to cellular networks. Cricket became a viable profession, and cricketers were both icons and role models. Personally, the win was very important for me. Until that time, I was playing cricket with no real passion or ambition. I never thought or dreamed of playing for my country. This changed when I watched Sri Lanka play Kenya at Asgiriya. It was my final year in school, and the first seed of my vision to play for my country was planted in my brain and heart. When I witnessed Sanath Gurusinghe and Aravinda produce a devastating display of batting. That seed of ambition spurted into life when a couple of weeks later, I watched that glorious final in Lahore. Everyone in Sri Lanka remembers where they were on the night of that final. The cheering of a nation was a sound no bomb or exploding shell could drown. Cricket became an integral and all important aspect of our national psyche. Our cricket embodied everything in our lives. Our laughter and tears, our hospitality, our generosity, our music, our food and drink. It was normalcy and hope and inspiration in a war-ravaged land. In it was our culture and heritage, enriched by a myriad ethnicities and religions. In it, we were untouched, at least for a while, by petty politics and divisions. It is indeed a pity that life is not cricket. If it were, we would not have seen the festering wounds of an ignorant war. The emergence of cricket and the new role of cricket within Sri Lankan society also meant that the cricketers had bigger responsibilities than merely playing on the field. We needed to live positive lifestyles off the field, and we needed to give back. The same people that applaud us every game need us to contribute positively back to their lives. We needed to inspire mostly now off the field. The tsunami was one such event. The death and destruction left in its wake was a blow our country could not afford. We were in New Zealand playing our first ODI. We had played badly, like at the Oval, and were sitting disappointed in the dressing room when, as usual, Sanat's phone started beeping. He read the SMS and told us a strange thing had just happened back home where waves from the sea had flooded some areas. Initially, we weren't too worried, thinking it was a freak tide. It was only when we were back in the hotel watching the news coverage that we realized the magnitude of the devastation. It was horrifying to watch footage of the waves sweeping through coastal towns and washing away in the blink of an eye the lives of thousands. We could not believe that it had happened. 